How is it going, everyone? It is I, Psycho Blue, conductor of the hype train, Mr. Hype Gems, hashtag Cross Wires, hashtag Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Joining me today is the amazing and legendary Jury Kills friend. How you doing today, Mr. Fuentes? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's uh, another exciting day and another exciting day to commentate Cross Tekken. That it is, because it's now time to take a look at our pools of top eight from Combo Breaker 2023. For those who are not aware, top four came up today. You can check that out now on IFC Yipes on YouTube. But this is the rest of the tournament that took place, or at least everything that was streamed. We are not going to waste your time. I am excited to present this legendary event as this was the 10th anniversary of Street Fighter Cross Second Version 2013 and 2023 marks 10 years of the patch that made everything click just right and helped this game meet its potential and to celebrate that I put down $500 as a pop bonus for Combo Breaker 2023 and its appearance at the side term and efforts of All In Together. Thank you so much to Net Battles and IFC Yipes for streaming us, but now it is time to see what happened before things went to top four. Without further ado, I am going to pull that up and then we will see exactly what unfolded. All right, I'm really excited. Uh, thank you so much for being a staple in the community, Psycho Blue, um, especially these last 10 years. So I'm um, excited to see what is going to happen up to this top eight. All right, so we are not going to waste any further time. It's time to see what happened between Psycho Chronic and Mon Pote Vincent. So Mon actually comes from France, and he joined this tournament um, the day it happened. He asked me to open the bracket back up so that he could huh? sign up as someone told him Cross Tekken was indeed a tournament at Cabo Breaker. There were like four people who asked me that, and I wasn't able to keep the bracket open long enough for all of them. Um, Mon happened to chase me down in the, uh, the morning, but everyone else said, I wish I knew, I wish I knew, I wish I knew. So I'm not sure what happened there. It was part of the main bracket for All In Together. No worries, though. Yeah. So I'm glad they were able to join the tournament. And we have Psychochronic coming in with Jerry, uh, trying to get the frame traps in there. And Mon Pines is doing, that's a pretty good, uh, rare team, Ken and Heihachi. Ken is a pretty much a uh, plug and play kind of character. He's got good point synergy, he can get combo extenders, and let's see what he gets here. Yeah, I All was right. saying earlier to him, ooh, well, let me see what happens here. I was saying earlier to him, that he's playing the meta by having someone like Ken who can plug in and have strength anybody. And then Heihachi, who specifically needs Ken's strengths to cover up his weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And you see here, Ken sets up, and Heihachi comes in to finish. So yeah, as somebody who uses Ken, Ken is a very plug-and-play kind of a team member. Poison Jury. I've seen Jury on point, but I've also seen her on anchor frequently because she gets her best combos off of people setting her up. But she has excellent pokes and excellent tag cancel moves like the pinwheel to make people miserable if she feels like setting up somebody on her end. Yeah. And there, um, Psycho Chronic had got a happy birthday, so he's putting, uh, he got, he's in a lot of pain. Ooh, he crosses up the counter there. Ooh, I like this. Oh, you pretty much have to cash out because Poison deals so little damage when she doesn't have meter and she is estimated by many people to be the worst character in this game because everything she can do, everybody else can do better if not exactly the same. Yeah, if you're playing Poison, you like the character. You're not uh, trying to optimize. And that's that's okay. Characters can work. If, you know, it's a team game. So, you know, you put team members together like this. Yeah, she, and, you know... Her pokes are great. She does have great pokes. Yeah, that should be a close out there. Oh, oh no, no too high. Just gets the jury. Terrell ties in. Psycho Chronic is definitely fighting at a deficit, but nothing's impossible in this game. That's for sure. There's a lot of chaos right now. Um, if 
Jury had just waited for that DP to land. She could have gotten a big punish and brought Poison in a much easier way than he did, but so far it's pretty close. Oh, he might lane this out. I might get a timeout yeah. here. Run away, run away, run away to save oh, your no life. No time out for those who are ready to troll. Too bad. One second left. No One second. Left. Oh, there was top eight. Top four was fantastic if you're looking for games that aren't time over fests. So be sure to check that out in IFC Yipes. It was just uploaded today. For now, we are going on to game two. Mon... Monpote Vincent is up one nothing. Yeah, he's putting the hurt on Sucker Chronics uh, poison. But they got a lot out of that counter poke there, ABC to get Jury in. But this looks like she's gonna end up dying. Oh, good chance there. See what kind of magic Sucker Chronics can do with a fully life Jury. All right, so I may need to update the scoreboard as I thought I did at the event, but at the same time I was also managing to. Said at the same time running a bracket, so just about ladies and gentlemen, we will try to update the scoreboard as soon as we can. For now, Mon Pote Vince is up one nothing. Yeah. There you go. Jury comes in, she does all the work that she needs to do. I'd like to see um Mon Pote Vincent use Heihachi's uh air crush move. There's very little of that, so Psychochronic is just cashing in on that, saying, Hey, you're not gonna air crush me. It's gonna keep jumping. Bam, we got two stocks. Okay, we got the low stock. Let's see if Psychocron still has it. Oh, he uses the cold standing heavy kick. He's an airborne move and trades. All right, backs out there. He does need an empty low, but doesn't get too much off of it. Okay, let's see what the conversion is here. Oh man, Mon Pote's Vincent Heihachi is just getting bullied by these ladies here. He's uh. He jumped in a lot, and hopefully he can uh, respond back to it. He's eating a lot of jump ins, it's leading to a lot of damage. Psychochronic is getting a lot out of those. He's got Ken. If he can get the spacing down again, another jump in. Psychochronic definitely knows what's working for him, and he's going to keep doing it until Monpote Vincent. Well, I will say him. this Psychochronic is someone who does know how to play this game, and. For anyone who know, recognize the name, he is a master of many different games across several different eras. Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, Super Turbo, Darkstalkers, um, particularly Vampire Savior. I mean, I don't know how good he is at Vampire Hunter, but I imagine he's adequate because, again, he's a, someone who is well-traveled. His journeys on the bus are well-documented in FGC history. And as for Poison Jury, don't forget, we actually played Psycho Chronic way back at Civil War. We did. We yeah. Definitely did, pal. Get to throw here. So, then, as you said, doesn't do too much damage. She's gonna have to really work to get this this uh, round in the bag for them. Well, get too much off the air crush. Notice that Vincent isn't really punishing a lot of these block boosts either. And oh. it looks like he doesn't know about that particular frame trap. That's a safe tag in. That was some good blocking right there. Yeah, but this is looking pretty bleak right now. Psychochronic, one round away from moving on in pools, and Monpote Vincent is uh, got to find something quickly to work because Psychochronic knows what he he can do against him. Yeah, we're getting jump ins on Monpote Vincent's side, and ooh, well, un until Ken gives you reason to worry about what happens if you block his jump, it's not really that scary because his overhead is rather telegraph and the benefit gets from overhead aren't nearly as scary as Heihachi's overheads. Yeah, exactly. Alright. Use the alpha counter to get a safe tag in. I'm assuming Jury wanted to maybe catch Heihachi media so that she has some extra block frames, but not to be a little bit too early. I like that. He waited out right there. Waited for Jury to counter. Oh, nice. Very good combo. Waited for Jury to counter and got all that damage. Now Jury needs to get out. Ooh. No such luck. Next round's yeah. gonna take this no matter what. All right, this is a barn burner going down to the wire here. Anyone's game here. Okie dokie. So you see Poison trying to find that spot where she can catch Ken unaware. She does have one bar, and if Ken throws too much plasma, there may be a leg drop coming all the way from the other side of the screen. Right there. 
Leg drop, so much damage. That's a punish. Good job waiting your turn. I really think Psychochronic has mastered exactly where to press buttons after a DP tag. Yeah. Because again, Team while you don't win to do it, yeah. Oh, okay. That, you, no punish there from Hiachi. So, oh. remember, he has a Hachi, always block high. Take the low, as they say. What's the conversion here? Ooh, nice overhead. This is going to hurt. Boom, 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 boom. Big, decent damage. Big one. This could Good be it. chase oh, down. He had waited and blocked out. That could have been dangerous. And Vincent is getting a lot of mileage off these air to air. He knows exactly when to press buttons here. What yeah. a poke! All the way at the optimal range where a Hachi couldn't reach. Still slightly in Vincent's favor, though. Hey, Hachi trying to... Does, there's an march in, but he didn't get the anti-air, and now it's dead. Psychochronic moves forward yeah. two to one. Oh, that's Chronic. rough. I was expecting when hey, Hachi was just marching forward that way, because Jury was jumping a lot, that he was going to use either the headbutt or stand medium kick to get the anti-air properties off those moves and get follow-ups so that would seal the deal because Jury was so low on health. Yeah, and he was fishing for that hit back and forth, Psychochronic. And once he hit that, that was it. And, you know, these, you know... So it looks like this is going to be Major versus Brent is Cool, the current EVO champion. Hmm. Now, I'm sure I have told you about all the battles I've had with Brent is Cool and what a... Uh, what a hassle it can be to face him. But at least it's not just me anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but I guess, again, not to brag, I guess against me, it kind of have to be someone who would beat most everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Guys I'm stuck on, who I never got the, the solid win over. Um, Brent. I ran it back on Lenneth. So Brent, Homeless Dragon. Um... Justin beat me, so I gotta run it back on Justin eventually. And after that, I, I don't know who's left. I've beaten... Oh, have I beaten Seth? I forget. I did beat, um, Windolfer, though. Okay. That was quick. As we're talking, look how quick that was. Yeah, I mean, it goes fast. We're talking about how the game drives, but it can also end very quickly. Isn't his actual size, so moves that look like him for the front are actually a cross-up because of how weird that cross-up he has is. Or it could be that fact that Dudley moves forward and backwards so well, and he sways really well. I have to worry about machine gun blows into more Rufus mixes. The real exactly. kicker for Brent is the fact that he always knows exactly when you either want to press buttons when you shouldn't, or when you want to move forward when you shouldn't. Because Rufus has such fantastic pokes in this game, because of that boost system, that you have to worry about the ground as much, if not more, than what you got to worry about when he comes from the air. Exactly. You can see they, this team just works so well with each other because Dudley is a, a heavy mix-up character in this game. This is and, done. Yeah, it's already over. It's already <laughs> so. Hey, quick work. Sorry, oh. Major. Oh, man. Oh, man. We got Brent is cool. Got Rufus Dudley. And it's, it's, a, it's huge momentum on their side like you're saying the knockdowns it seems like every time brent he hits he it always cashes for him it's very rare that he has to uh mix a mix up so it's good for him though so he moves on quickly to the next part uh, part of the pool major unfortunately is in the uh loser bracket maybe we'll see him again maybe not but we're moving on to the next one so i was playing brent on combo breaker friday he wanted to move to rufus vega and after I had beaten that team a few times, I explained why you should stick with this team, Rufus Dudley. This team has all the things you just mentioned. also has utility where you can play offensively or defensively because Dudley has a true reversal. And Rufus has possibly the best reversal of the whole game with the EX Messiah kick. With a team like Rufus Vega, you could just... It only plays one way. It only plays lane. You can't make comebacks with that team very well. But with Rufus Dudley, you can either keep a lead or take a lead easily. Okay, so now we're on Oxy versus Endgamer. Endgamer, a 
fairly popular name in the Street Fighter world. Um, I've seen him play five. I've seen him play Street Fighter four. Seen him play Cross yeah. Tekken. Look at this team: Sakura and Nina. One low tier and one high tier. <laughs> All right, so I actually don't mind Alyssa in the front most of the times, but I think if you are going to play Alyssa Chun-Li, I like Alyssa in the back, like what uh, Lenneth used to do. Yeah, I mean, they're both extremely strong Ooh, point characters. Look at that hand shake. Shake my hand. Shake my hand. Unfortunately, a... you have to remember that you can cancel that in the kicks, though, and that's really important for Chun-Li's neutral game, particularly either in block strings or to tag cancel people in. Not the combo end gamer, but he still got the uh, skull crusher at that after that. Spin to win, as they say. I can crush his skull. Well, um, I think uh, that particular move is called something different. The skull splitter actually hits your ankles in Street Fighter Cross because the skull splitter is uh, that move where she chops your that move where she chops your leg. Even though it's called skull splitter because in Tekken it comes at your head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of the uh, strange properties about Nina, the move that's a mid in Tekken is a low in this game, and it's a very sneaky low. The EX version causes a ground bounce, so if you're at mid-screen, watch your feet. The thing is, though, spin to win might catch you, and that leaves even more problems. Certainly does. I believe the... Is Ivory Cutter the overhead or the kick? I forget. I think the Ivory Cutter might be the spin to win. All right. Cashing out's not the worst idea. All right, what's the mix up out here? I mean, Chun-Li can literally, like, walk up and do whatever she wants. It's Chun-Li. Not... One of the best three characters in the game, in my opinion. I actually have her just above Jin. Yeah. He's the best three fighter character, bar none. No one's even close to her. Oh, yeah, easily. Ooh, what a spot. Oh, a little bit too low on that jug. A little bit too early, I should say. But that was, um, that's the scary thing about Nina. She can convert from so far away with major damage. Uh, also, he had the kill there, but wasn't able to finish an endgamer. He, he takes that, he takes it, he sneaks away. That handshake, I think, Asa was trying to go for combos. I think a simple ABC would have closed that round out and wouldn't have to, uh, be down one point. Yeah, I was, I... I think I was playing Oxy earlier this day, and Oxy was asking me, what makes Chun-Li so great? And I said, you want to use the handshake a lot, and then either boost into it or cancel into it with legs. That's the real scary aspect of Chun-Li. <laughs> she also has one of the best, not the best, three-frame move of the game with uh, Crouch Light Kick. So much range. These little, these stray pokes, I want to see them boosted because I think Oxy has a very good idea of where Endgamer wants to move forward and then doesn't capitalize. Yeah, because Chun Li outfushes both of these characters like in her sleep, and we're seeing it, but he's just not getting the conversions. Like you're saying, no ABCs. It's a Chun Li show right now. Yeah, this Chun Li could with the way. Oh no, that is um, that's a proper throw, by the way. Unblockable. Yep. You don't. Oh, the counter hit, but no ground bounce. I don't think Endgamer knew what to do there, because that's a, uh, a counter hit only situation. Thing is, though, that works on both standing and crouching, so you could get some good stuff off of it. It eats up a lot of juggle points. So what I usually do after ground bounce overhead is I go for the uh, arm break combo again, because we'll catch them while they're in ground bounce. Yeah. Good reversal, but no follow up. Neither of these players are finishing their food. Yeah, but at the end of the day, Endgamer is um, one round away from taking and moving on in the pools. Well, in scrambles like this, it'll come down to who has the best fundamentals, I think. It will. Because we said earlier, there are plenty of times Chun-Li had both these characters in a bad situation. It's just Oxy didn't do anything with it. And eventually Endgamer found the spot that he needed for Sakura and Nina to make Chun-Li stop trying to go for that handshake. Chun-Li with her best Dolph Ziggler impression, but to no avail. Let's see if Nina can finish off the other side of the equation, Alyssa. Okay, again, Chun-Li again. Cashing out. All right, now that I've seen I don't think this is worth three bars. Uh -oh. it'd, be, it'd be one thing if it was like Chun-Li doing a solo combo off of her target combo with the up kicks, but uh, not here. 
Yeah, typically for Chun-Li, you want to be the one building me. That's why Chun-Li is better as a point character and why I said I'd rather have a list in the back than Chun-Li, not just for the pokes, but the fact that she builds so much meter with her rapid kicks, which is just motion this game. So handshake and the kicks, you keep your turn and you build a lot of meter to tag cancel your partner if you need to. That's correct. And this is kind of a team building one-on-one -on -one for those watching that you got to consider your characters like Alyssa is a better point bait character, but Chun-Li is a superior point character just because of the things you mentioned. That's right. And uh, Alyssa has better benefits coming in as an anchor compared to Chun-Li where her Earth damage post-launch isn't really that great. Oh my gosh. An end gamer. Oh, you could have finished it there. That might have... If she had completed the combo and brought Alyssa to do her combo, that actually might have closed the deficit. But it did not, so end gamer proceeds forward. See, Endgamer has a really weird team, too. You should have Sakura in the back and Nina in the front. Nina's, yeah. Nina's considered the best anchor character, but other than Sakura's stand heavy kick, her pokes aren't that great. And you saw how heavy Endgamer leaned on that stand heavy kick. Mm -hmm. Here is the typical Sakura plan. You anti-air with crouch heavy punch, and as they get mad and land, you throw out a standing heavy kick that might catch them just as they move forward, and then launch into your partner. That's the best Sakura can do on point, in my opinion. But Nina, she has great pokes. She has the spin to win, easy tag cancel into a partner. She has the great anti-air. Then you can... Um, do like uh, a combo into your partner. She has great low attacks. She has Skull Splitter, which as a tag cancel isn't that bad. There's yeah. just so. Uh, I think uh, also her Blonde Bomb has some good block frames as well that allows her to tag her partner in. It's just the options for Nina on points better than Sakura on point, as Endgamer is finding out facing 40% Flash Kick. You remember this guy, right? Mm hmm. Oh man, this guy knocked me out of Evo 2016, and. I got that run back before the tournament started, at least. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you gotta have to. So, end game, or, sorry, Fortune Flash Kick was, if I recall correctly, one, one match away from making top eight Evo 2013. I think, I think Justin might have been the one to knock him out. Either Justin or Esta, one or the other. Maybe, maybe TZA. But yeah, he was close to making top eight. At Evo 2013, so you want to be on your guard against 4% Flash Kick. Look at that perfect knowledge of where to poke with Jin, where to bring in Huarong. Yeah, right now Huarong is just handling the team by himself. He's not even worried. He has, like, no health in here. Honey Honk, super safe. Team top tier. Did you see that micro walk? That is so mean. He walked forward and then started to go for the medium punch. Because he knew it was going to hit. He has that spacing down pat. He's just shaking out some cobwebs because it's been a while. See, right there. You saw that? Anti-air and then skin heavy. It's the best soccer can do on point. It's funny that this is one of the top teams in the game, even though in canon they hate each other. Well, they don't hate each other. It's a healthy rivalry. Because remember, Huarong saved Jin's life in Tekken 7. That's why Huarong is an eye patch. Hmm. Or did, anyway. Now, he looks a bit like Adon now in the face. I don't know why people are saying, oh, he's so handsome now. He looks like Adon. He has like a kind of like a bird face now. But I think it's much more the hair kind of pulling back his face a bit. Yeah. That's just me though. Alright, and he uses the launcher. Jin, one of the few characters that has two hits on his launcher, which is a safe launcher. Now we have Hong who can put you in blocks and for days. Nina, you could have done more off that. I think this is where the experience differ comes to play. Mm -hmm. Endgamer isn't playing confident, even though when he gets these pokes, they could lead to a lot more. And I think that's... Okay, there you go. He remembers now. Okay. He can do What's more, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, I, I don't like Sakura having to clean up and catch up. This is an uphill battle for her. Yeah, well... Again, which is getting... the best characters in the game. Sakura can catch up... I mean, both characters can catch up. Me can do better than Sakura. It's just... Sakura, I think, is better when someone's already done the work in neutral for her. Mental alertness, kick. Yeah, for Sakura to come back from that, she would have had to pretty much be close up to these two characters smell their cologne. You can't give them any space in that situation. Otherwise, they'll just run away and make you hurt at the mid-range when you try poking at them, and then they already have better pokes waiting for you. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so Team Top Tier moves on with 56 uh, 45 flash kick. I have not, I have not seen Sakura do any kind of Tatsu pressure either. Yeah, the air Tatsu. Air Tatsu, air Tatsu, light Tatsu. That is so obnoxious this game. I haven't seen Sakura go for that at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is the Tekken chain. All right. The tag out there with that. Oh, counter hit. Swing Willow. He saw that punch. Swing Willow the, the gut punch. Mm. Tisk, tisk. tisk 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 tisk. Bajillion after you get hit by that. So. Oh yeah. But yeah, Air Tatsu for Sakura is not only active a very long time. The block stun on it is ridiculous. That I want to see Sakura go to the air, and unless Warwon gives, uh oh, we have the EX Dynamite heal, no cross up necessary. Uh, yeah, that that move can be tricky, but that situation that was just uh, catching as an overhead. Alpha counters out. Oh, this, I think he wanted to attack out, and that's not good. This is looking really bleak right now. There you go. That's the cross up Ooh. right there. Nice. For our end gamer, going down to the loser side and 40% flash kick moves on. And 40% that... flash kick played it by the book. He just played it like how normal Harong and Jin does. So nothing too flashy or special there. I forgot if. You know, watching again, I wonder if Endgamer just forgot at the angle you have to be for Sakura to have her best shot at the air Tatsu pressure. Yeah. Probably forgot. Okay, so next up is going to be Spicy Steve, the CEO 2019 champion against 40% Flash Kick. Mm. Poke, poke, shank, shank, shank. I remember, didn't uh, Tatsunical say he hated how that Link was harder in 2013's Why He Dropped the Game? I'm, I forget that was a joke where he's actually serious about that. I think so, yeah. Yeah, th so it's funny that um, I see... Spicy hit it actually pretty consistently. I think it's just a matter of principle, though. I think it was like it was a one-frame shortening, and there was no reason other than the fact that Tatsunoko was doing well with Vega at the time, which is probably true. I mean, who else played Vega back then? But no, I don't remember because he played Vega Xiaoyu, if I recall correctly. Meanwhile, we have some of a similar idea: Vega and King. Uh oh, Swelling Willow, watch yourself. <laughs> Okay, keep it simple. I like it, but this is quite a mountain to climb. You cannot be sleeping on Spicy Steve. He won CEO for a reason. He is a solid player, especially comes the old man fundamentals. He is, after all, a super turbo native first. Lands of the feet, because that's what you got to do in that game. Have fundamental. And which is why Vega is such a good fit for him. You see how he already had that stand like X scout. That's also a fantastic button. Everyone talks about uh, Vega's shanks with the claw. Stan Light Kick in this game is lethal. Let's see what the mix up here. Looking for Honey Hop. I'm more than certain. No, that is not safe. I thought he was going to do Honey Hop, but nope. We're getting happy birthday, and Jin is like, this is why I don't like you so much. Hold on. That was so he, went the, he went for the launcher, but that was uh, not safe. I really like how Spicy realized if I go for the normal King Enders, there won't be any more Happy Birthday stuff. So let me tag in Vega to make absolutely sure I catch both characters. Yeah. That was, that was a, a probably a, a thing that 40% Flash has to make sure. So Jin is one of the few characters whose launcher is safe and tagged to so just two hits. Orang is not. It's Honey Hawk is what his, why he wants to get out. Well, to be fair, there are a lot of times people will just uh, tag cancel launcher and still get results. So I don't blame Forza and Flashkick for thinking that Spicy Steve would not know the timing of how to punish. Because remember, you can put the brakes on your partner's approach by holding down back as soon as you come in. And they may stop short of where you would think they would be after something like that. See right there? Yeah, he didn't. He, I don't know why he didn't cal cancel there. That would have been a great opportunity to do that, especially he knows he's gonna get punished. I think because maybe his meter was uh, still low by the time he had checked. That when he had time to check it, he realized he already had enough meter for it. Because keep in mind that blue on blue can be hard to see in the pinch. Because yeah. I said the super meter and the health bar meter are so far away from each other. You have to look up and down before you really focus on someone's feet, and that can be hard. 
get to get rid of the, the recovery health, so Horong needs to get out as soon as possible. He's basically ooh. lucky with the hunting hog. Work. Very lucky. Yeah, no, he no. Ah, uh, he missed the wa well. To be fair, wave dash with Jin can be hard because it's not it's not true DP. It's like a forward neutral, and then the the sway after that can be kind of difficult depending what you're playing on. Oh, he missed time. He so spicy Steve got away with that one, like you were saying. Sometimes you have the timing right, and sometimes you don't. Good. Okay. Yeah. Don't be doing that in Vega. The moment Spicy's is confident that he can cast that consistently, problems will occur. You see right there, Jim put the brakes on how we approach so we can potentially catch Vega with uh, Crouch Light Punch. Probably the second best three frame move in this game. If not third best. Um, the other option I would have would be Elena's Stand Light Kick or maybe Blanca's Stand Light Punch. I really feel, really feel saucy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see how spicy Steve is stuttering right here? He knows exactly what Flash wants to do. All right, I dare you. Come on. Watch it. Should be dead. Not quite. Oh, oh, yeah. Magic Pixel. All right. Yeah. No choice but a DP there. Someone would have gotten caught otherwise. Dear. So. Good blocking. I don't know. That was if really he, good blocking. He, yeah. If he can end this round 40% uh, flash dish and win, that would have been a good investment on the cross assault but he didn't get too much off of it and time is ticking away and he hasn't even built his first meter yet this is all looking good for what Spicy a Steve. jump oh he missed the link that was your chance that could have actually finished king there yeah and he just puts himself back in the meter deficit and this is it boom 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 is he gonna let time run out yes he is so that uh that cross assault didn't pay off in dividends for 40 playing flash kick he doesn't have a bar and spicy steve has bar to go and if we know anything about cross second bar is gold it, this is how you cash and do all your things and your options open up so not having full bar going into another round is really really a, a disadvantage and don't forget that this game has third strike rules whiffing certain buttons will build you meter regardless you hit anything or not mm -hmm. Oh, nice. we're anti-airing the super turbo way. This is dead. That should be dead. Fantastic. Fantastic round for flash kick. Yeah. He uh, shook it off. Didn't care about no deficit. He did what he needed to do to win. I mean, they're team top tier for a reason. Team best frenemies. Yes. Okie dokie. All right, so, going into there. Ooh, you saw the spacing on that stand light kick. He knows exactly where he needs to go to get the juicy stuff with Vega. Hmm. Okay, we right. see in here. Throw, let's we'll see what the, the next mix is from Spicy Steve. He probably expected Huang to roll out. And he jumped back. Gave him too much space there. Well, he's still stuck at the corner. It's not terrible for King. Look at that. No. He stopped them right in his tracks with that stand light kick. That's a standing oh, low. That's a standing low, by the way. You gotta watch yourself when you're at that range against King. That stand low might just come out of nowhere, and then you gotta get boosted on, or boosted on into maybe the uh, EX Convict Kick, and that leads to the fun King combos. I like how Spicy Steve is choosing block, and I'm some somewhere far away. That man felt very happy, but still gets opened up. But the blocking on Spicy Steve is pretty immaculate. You know, you're not going to take a whole bunch of damage if you just sit there and block. I did like how Flash Kick um, waited to see how they would Alpha Counter out and then respond with Jin so Jin could punish. Yeah. All right. Again, tagging in. This is trying to bully King, but there's a huge light deficit. This is the overhead. That could have been punished. Dangerous stuff. Uh, oh, ooh, you could have been jabbed out there. Raw launcher, oh, yes. not, e not yeah. even crushing anything. He just used it as a whiff punish. Yeah, he whiffed and he just launched them there. I think, if I remember but, my frames correctly, it's like 12 frames, so that was a legitimate whiff punish. Well, also the fact that he probably expected if he did survive, he probably would have gone for a crouch medium launch. Ooh, empty low, and now we have the fancy ooh, king combos. This, is, this might be death. Oh, just a little bit of health left. The low? No. Oh, swinging DDT perfectness. 
Spicy Steve moves forward and he'll be in winner's finals as he advances two to one. Mm hmm That was great. I mean, I can't think of a better way to end that round outside of the swinging DDT to perfect. So, yeah, great job, Spicy Steve, as you say. The CEO champion comes up here and lays the law down and moves on to the bracket. And 40 minutes flash kick, you know, uh, unfortunately falls into the loser's bracket, but you know, there's still more action to come. What are your thoughts so far, uh, Psycho, as you're watching this? So I just saw Floki jump on. Floki is someone who got third place at last ECT, and I had to beat him to have my rematch against Justin Wong. It didn't go my way that time either, but it was close. It was fun. I just uh, ran out of steam. But we'll see if Floki has been training since the last time we saw him. Oh, that was a button check. Okay. Yeah, I remember he had Sagat Huarong. Mm -hmm. I prefer Huarong Sagat, but to be honest, it can go both ways. I've seen Sagat yeah. on point a lot, but I've seen Sagat as an anchor as well to keep things lame and keep things annoying. It's just sometimes... My main issue with Sagat this game is that when it's round one fight, that's the absolute worst spot Sagat can be unless your DPs are on point. Yeah, he because... definitely does need the meter to get his, his stuff going. So honestly... Not me, no, not, it's not the meter, he needs space. Yeah. He needs three-fourth quarter screen. When it's round one fight, he needs three-fourth quarter speed to get stuff going. Otherwise, he'll get jumped in on every single day because of his big hitbox and the fact that his fireballs take a billion years to recover. Okay, yeah. All right, that should be dead. The Floki uh, runs into a, a huge swaying willow that leads to his death. Sagat does not need meter to really frustrate you, but he does not need to use meter for that either. Like, other than EX Tiger Knee, the only reason to use meter for him is to have the EX Tiger Uppercut, which is super safe on tag cancel. Safer than his normal uh, Tiger Uppercut. That's why you want Sagat on point if you're going to use him on point. You want that poke, that far medium kick. Because that is a fantastic poke. And it leads yeah. to great conversions on boost combos. Like, it, it seldom, if ever, misses a boost if it hits. That being said, his longest reaching poke is his Crouch Heavy Punch. It doesn't have the same, oh my god, what is this from CDS2. But in footsies, it's an underrated button. But for most parts, you'll be using far medium kick. That's the reason why Sagaz point character has merit. Charges that? Oh. Didn't do anything with it. For me. Yeah, not a true media there. Gets counter here for his trouble. Boom, bam. Ooh, ow. Oh, no. Um, the DP there. The buffer. He, he missed the buffer. He wanted to do uh, medium punch and medium kick into DP, but he buffered the DP too soon got the tiger knee instead. This is looking good for 40% slash kick. If he doesn't get DP'd, his face off. Well, Floki still is a sizable lead. Look, he knows yeah. what he wants. You see, uh oh, now Huarong is playing footsies. Wow, that could have led to death. Oh man, that stinks. I was oh, hyping up. Oh, that's good. That's a good thing. That was though. I did miss it again. Run, 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 run. Okay, he that's survived. Okay, time's out. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's. I just uh, hit that kick, and I thought a boost was coming, and that would have been death. He didn't expect that to hit that way. Let's be real. You saw how it stuffed the far medium kick. I was hyping that move so much, and then he did nothing. Then that happened. That's annoying. That makes me feel bad for Sagat. This poke's great. This is why it's a great point here. Then Huang said, that's nice. Here's a uh, stand heavy in your face. Okay. So Floki broke through the uh, the mental alertness. And this should be it. If you can get... Yeah, there you go. Stepping on your toes. A low attack. I mean, it's a low because he's stepping on your feet. But that was good. Floki it was able to close it out. It was getting kind of dicey at the end of the, the prior round, but he's able to kind of hold himself together and get the, goes up one in the set. Well, don't forget that we're playing on Xbox 360 and not the high refresh goodness of PC where we play on like 165 Hertz monitors. Yeah. So all of our cancel timings are whack right now. Yeah, everybody support uh, FGCOS and the high refresh vision that everybody has for the new generation of fighting games and the old generation as well. Street Fighter Cross Tekken was one of the first, if not the first, fighting games to have refresh rate options cooked into its main menu. 
So PC Warriors, if you want to have Capcom Cup approve 120 hertz or better refresh rate for your fighting games, Street Fighter Cross Second is the way to go. And you can still buy the game on PC as well because the GameStop online store has global Steam keys for 30 bucks a pop. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no swimming for oh. you, my friend. Bam, raw tags. Let's see what the big punish is here. Uh -huh. Jump. Mm, uh. Oh, no. I wanted to see how, what was going to happen with that combo, but the fireball does not carry the juggle. Right. I have not. I want to see Floki do more Yogo DP in these block strings. Should. Or he sh there you go, but that's not what we that want. Was an see. Yeah, that was an alpha counter, and that situation, Jim was ready. If he had done. If he had gone like Vanellis had got ways and uh, attack hand sold off of that, that'd be something. Oh, he drops a key. Still got a chance. He's gone. Uh, no, he's just gonna get go. He had no meter to bust out. Uh, push him off. So you don't. Kick there. You don't want to obviously YOLO Tiger uppercut every single time you're in block stun. But I think against Huarong, it's not the worst idea to throw out, especially if you have meter to spare, so you can attack against your partner. Because then your opponent will really be thinking about, hey, I just did a block screen. I lost half my life because of one Tiger Uppercut. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, Sagat's Tiger Uppercut trades. So he can get uh, some pretty nasty steps off trade Tiger Uppercut. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Ooh. That, he thought there was going to be a low and does a launcher. Sagat is in Painesville, but doesn't get too much off of that. Could have gotten a low to a Hunting Hawk, but instead gets... I need mean, okay. Ooh, okay, ABC. good adjustments. Good adjustments. I also like how Sagat tested Harwan with his three frame the crouch light punch. DP mm. or, or poke like that, whichever. And that's dead. Yeah. All right. Loki's on uh, a match point. So I'm thinking maybe he when he when he's doing the his combo and he throws Tiger uh, shot that it's a uh, it's a frame kill and it's actually a needy or good situation. So. I'm, I'm wondering. I'm going to watch and see if uh, Floki does it again. Goes for the regular GP boost chain. This is hurting right now. 40 plant flash kit needs to get some momentum on his side. Oh, presses a button. That is a safe move. And That's you notice Floki has attack gems burning with his far long, so a lot of pain right now. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. oh, good ant here. That was clutch. And a chase down. Oh, nice. Uses the Mishima heavy kick. Is it crossing up? Is it hitting oh, forward? No, no, no. That's better. That's better than either Mishima's heavy kick. Because that Man, has he's... that has nasty air. But, but so does Heihachi and Kazuya's, but Jin's particular is the best of lot. Because that will just... And again. Yeah. Keep going. Is the yeah. Kazama style jumping heavy kick. There we go. This is the, um, the disgraced, nameless heavy kick. The god kick, as they say. We, we, we've heard about the electric wind hook fist. This is the electric tornado god kick. Either Ooh. one can keep their tournament going. Oh, no, that's unfortunate. Pokey jumped in, gets DP for his troubles, and 40% flash kick keeps himself alive in the tournament. Yeah, we talk about the Mishima heavy kick, but Jin is just... I don't like this. Do you know why I don't like this? So I don't think Sagat was a problem on that team. I thought with the way... If he just DP'd a lot more in block strings, I think Sagat and Floki would be advancing right now. They would be advancing yeah. right now. And you're seeing right here, he does not have the experience he has with Law that he does with Sagat. You can tell right now by the way he's playing. Yeah, the combos. The combos, like where he's setting out buttons... Um, I thought Sagat, if he had DP through block a little bit more and tested to see what Flashic would do, that it would have been... He'd be advancing right now, to be real. I think Sagat, Sagat put his foot off the gas a little too much. Yeah, 40% Flashic got the EX overhead, and I thought, oh man, we were about to take him to Painesville, but he dropped it. So, Floki's still in there. Floki is getting the, the benefit of some drop combos from 40% Flashic, but... Oh my gosh, if you're going to switch to law, flip kick. Flip kick. That's why Nobody I said Nobody can jump on you. So God was not the problem. And now that he knows, okay, I can jump on this law, law's a lot less scary. Yeah. If Sagat had DP'd more, I think Floki would be advancing right now. 
And now, right now, it's looking like an uphill battle. It's basically Horong versus Jin and Horong right now. Bop, bop, boom, boom, boom. Ah, you could have done more than that. Fair than nothing, I guess. You gotta be careful because that medium punch is only five, and Jin can literally just jab and stop that nonsense. Boom, boom, counter hit, trying to press a button. I don't know why he would press a button with Law. Law has really slow normals, so it's not like he can, like, stop a string midway. I'm not Did sure. You... Floki is so afraid to reversal people. I don't know why he doesn't do Fist of Fury Rush. I mean, he has, he, he has Fury bar. Rush, EX Flip Kick, Tiger Uppercut. Like, that's why I said I don't like this switch, because I don't think Sagat being Sagat is why he was losing. I think him not being Sagat while playing Sagat was the problem. Yeah, and this looks like it's about to be over. Yeah. I oh, missed it again. No worries. And he scoops him up, and that's unfortunate. The, the worst way you can die in this game is full bar. All that bar is just saying, why you don't love me? Why won't you use me? Well, it's, it's unfortunate because you are right. I do think Floki had it. He had the the match in his hands and he just fumbled it out of it and 40% flashy just picked it up and ran with it alrighty so I do believe that was everything because this wow. was losers quarters we did winners no there's I think there's one more losers quarters match because they've got to get to semis. Yeah. We're almost, we're almost at the end. We're almost there. All right. So we're close. All right. Um. Yeah. With. With Sagat. Tiger Uppercut is such a great deterrent in this game. I think it's actually better than a Shoryuken. In my opinion. In mm -hmm. terms of tag canceling. Because he's so big and. The angle they go and the attack output is so much better than the regular show you can. It feels like Sagat has the best one. And the fact it does so much damage as well, and the fact that he gets so much off a of trade compared to Ryu or Ken with their show you Kens, or even Akuma. I want to see Tiger Uppercut YOLO'd a lot more in block strings. Just to see what Flashic would do. The same reason, that's why I didn't like the Law Switch, because I didn't think he would use what would make Law a better choice in that situation. He wasn't really doing anything that would allow him, that would allow you to think it was a better, a better pick. Okay, so we are on the other side of winner's semis now. Brent is cool and Lord BBH. All right. Poor BBH. A name I haven't heard in such a long time. But I've met him at MAGFest and a couple other places. But yeah, uh, he's still playing Julia. <laughs> and he's still playing Bison. Yeah. yeah he was now, one of the originators along with Ice. Yeah. Oh, man, Julia. <laughs> she's, she saw better days in the, the first version of the game. Not to say that she's not a strong character, but... First, uh, before 2023, uh, uh, 2013 uh, change, Julia was uh, had like crazy momentum mix-ups. BBH has to stop British School from going like. Well, you she know, still British does. School. She still does for the most part. Yeah. I think the issue here is will Lord BBH shake off the cobwebs before Brent rolls over him? Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Ooh, wow. Good check. I don't think there's anything bold about that. You have to do it for Bison. Yeah. Just like you said about Sagat, you have to check people with Tiger Uppercut, you have to check everybody with Stand Light Kick with Bison. Uh, uh, what's the mix up here? Oh, it misses the conversion there. All right, DPs. Again, Julia has a DP, so you gotta respect her. But there's a wall of buttons waiting for you. I said earlier, Brent's greatest strength is know exactly when you want to press buttons or move forward. Okay, he caught, he caught the dash. You have to. You have to test everybody with Bison and make sure they're I'll not hitting with the forward. overhead. The cool thing about Bison stand like it is that it has a great range as well as uh, great speed. Julia was keeping calm in that block string. I like but, that. I did like that. Yes. Whenever Rufus hits you with close medium punch, just stop doing what you're doing. Do not press anything. Do not try and get away. You're stuck there, mm -hmm. and you have to respect it. 
safe as far as Rufus can punish it. Oh, no, no, no. That's not safe against Rufus at all. At all. Oh, wow. Stand medium kick will beat it without even moving forward. Uh, I guess he dropped the, that punish there. But right now, Lord BBH is... He's fighting right now, fighting for his life. Dudley is just moving in little by little. The hard part about Bison, even though his stand like has great range, um, it's hard for him to really link off it for like a big confirm, especially in that situation. His best option off stand like kicks go for probably a, uh, a far medium punch. That might have enough Ooh. Oh, start up to it. Like, got a lot off that. He got a neutral jump heavy kick, but couldn't finish it. Missing a punish again. Miss it again. I don't think Laura Obrecht is cool has too much Julia matchup knowledge. Oh yeah, he doesn't. So I don't think anyone else really yeah, plays him other than uh, Lenneth who hasn't been to Discord for a long time. Yeah, like I said, back in the day Julia was plentiful and you know the lands of 2013 took it away. Oh, it could be a closer here. Boom, uppercut. Well, let's see, there was Ryan Hunter who didn't play 2013 that long. There was... Uh, Will. Played Julia, but he lamented the fact that Julia more or less got her limbs cut off. Uh, nah, I think Crouch Medium Kick in particular is still a button you have to respect. Yeah. It's not super crazy. Ooh, that could be a closer right here. Nice. We talked about momentum. She still has a nasty high-low mix. Yeah, she does. She still... She didn't lose that. It's the tools that help her start it, that they that were adjusted in the uh, Good hell attack. Okay, I think Lord BH has shaked off the cobwebs. He knows what to do now. Boom, boom, boom. Crusher. Ooh, Julia just came out of nowhere. That could have been big. That's smart. Use the tail end of the Crusher to create a mix-up like that. I use that with Blanca and the uh, cross of Horror Ball with Kuma. Ooh, ow. Eesh. We should... I think he's dead. We're swagging out. We are swagging out, ladies and gentlemen. Boop, 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 boop. Oh! Ooh. The Dempsey roll on Julia. Poor gal. Lord BBH. He had the right mix up. What? It's just he didn't get the conversion. <laughs> you see the, how uh... long Julia was in that uppercut? That truly... No, that was, that was the dramatic effect. Yeah, it's usually not that long someone gets smacked that way, but Julia. Julia was left to think about it, too. Yeah, hopefully she ex extracts her revenge. I'm saying Lord BBH when he hit that cycle crusher and Julia came on the other side. I, I felt see right there. Like you saw right there that um, Bison's mean kick got completely destroyed by Rufus's. Yeah. And if he tries Bison boost, Rufus just uh, presses Sam mean kick. No mic rock necessary, and he'll punish it. And I feel that he is more comfortable fighting Bison than he is Julia. Yes. He's uh, experienced fighting you and other Bison players. Oh no! Had the right idea, didn't have the right neutral jump button to hit Rufus, and ends up getting killed for his trouble. I don't Burgess think Bi Bison should have one in that situation that would catch Rufus. Yeah. Um, stand so, like a uh, neutral jump heavy kick. Does he has no cross ups off any of his neutral jumps. It's a problem. He got out of there. That situation. I like that dash up in there. All right, Julia's in there. I right, see what the mix up is. He plays it safe. Oh, overhead. Boom, boom. Show that's safe. That's not. But nice. just go to punish. Not with not with Dudley anyway. It's much harder with uh, Dudley. Like with Rufus, you can kind of press stuff that work for most characters in that situation, but Dudley's more esoteric. Oh, no. Oh, okay, I like that cross up. Not sure, but... Walking into buttons again. Chase down. He knows. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 Lord BBH tried it, but Brent is cool knows. He has matchup knowledge. We need, we need to see Julia in ASAP. Okay, Julia's in. Okay, ooh! Interruption! Let's see what he does here. Ooh, whip punish! I told you! That medium kick, it's nasty! DP out, and Peace. here comes Bibson. And here comes Julia once again. Um, bam! Okay, what's the mix up here? Oh yeah, oh my gosh. Can cans, but no follow up. Okay, this is a kill right here. It's that mat you can tell the difference. When he like he fights Bison, he's like, I know what I'm doing. This is great. He's learning on the fly to fight Julia. So there's a lot of unfamiliarities. I see a lot of boost chains not being checked. 
Because he's like, is it boost chain? Is it safe? I don't know. I'm not going to try it. She hurts. I but think... Bison is getting beat down right now. Well, this might be over, but I think... General of Cross Tekken, usually things look incredibly unsafe. And if they if they look unsafe, they probably are. Yeah. Like, cause you'll see characters get pushed back on block where it's esoteric. But Julia, she'll have like a billion years recovery off missed boost combos. And they don't push back far. That was a universal version 2013 change for most every character in the game. Yeah. And Lord BBH is trying to get out with Cycle Cross. Like, honestly, he, it would have been better if he just raw tagged. I mean, Brandon Cool was looking out for that and just, you know, takes the round off the whiff Psycho. And he moves on from winner semis and he's, you know, out the bracket in the final there. All right, excellent work. He will be facing, I believe, Spicy Steve in winner's finals. And again, you can watch that top four on IFC Yipes on YouTube. It's all or nothing. <sighs> So this looks to be a button check right here. Yeah, we're probably getting our, our last bit of losers right now. So what did you think? How do you feel about the uh, the top four stacking up? Um, so Spicy Steve, Brent is cool. That was what I expected winners finals to be based on the field. It's solely on cross teching. All right, jumping in there with the jump heavy, trying to smack it. Okay. VVH, let's see if he knows the matchup. Oh, you saw team. that combo? Look at that. He remembers the heavy scissor kick combo. He knows what to do. It's mm, the no, question, no. does Psychochronic know what to do? Because Psychronic has gotten off mostly off old man fundamentals. But BBH not just has fundamentals, he has experience in this game playing at a high level. Yeah, he does. I think he got a top 8 at EVO 2015, if I recall correctly. I'd have to look again, but he has come far in turn for this game. Because he played this game seriously. Okay, so I'm kind of surprising me here. That's a punish. Bop, boom. Bop, 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 boom. What's the mix going to be? Catch the roll as expected. Get back, back there. In. Oh, man. He yeah, had... Well, that's he was, Yeah, he was waiting, so. And Poison's DP is kind of weird to attack against Lawful, too. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've seen that move done to me way too many times to know that option. <laughs> Overhead, nothing, low. So he canceled uh, the dash into a low. So that would have been a top button. He was like, stay with the close around. All right, Lord BBH. Hell boom, attack. Boom. Mm -hmm. boom, bam, boom. Mix up. Got yeah, it. overhead this time. Okay. I would have thought he finished a super, but didn't need to. Perfect. So he used the prior mix up. He said, I went low. And he opened up with low. So Psychocron is like, oh, he's going to go low again. And he mixed in that overhead, and it sealed that match out fast. Hopefully Psychocron can shake it off. They go quickly into the next round, or the next set. Okay, Poison doing a lot of jumping around against Bison. That is unwise. There are some characters who can laugh off Hell Attack. Poison is not one of them. Better to stay on the ground and throw the fireballs because the worst case scenario is a jump in like that But you don't want Julia to get her momentum started. Oh, oh. stumble stun, but no conversion Yeah, they both traded. I could have felt like she still could have pressed Julia could have pressed the button She could have gotten crouched yeah. heavy punch for that range would have caught Yeah, and that in that exchange when she gets that that crumple oof, She can get a lot. So I think she could have recovered fast enough and did something this is where Psychochronic definitely wants to play, but again, like you're saying, stay out the air. Mm, all right. Very messy. You can up. do it in the corner, but it's hard. That dive kick was punishable, but he played it safe. Lord BBH. Okay, what's the mix up? He's gonna go overhead? No, he does nothing again. Empty is your soul. Yeah. Jump in, mm -hmm. bringing in the poison. Fireball. Fireball. EP for his troubles. Frame advantage, but makes no difference. Oh, caught with the last bit of hell attack, but not much of a follow-up. Probably wanted um, a kick ender. Didn't get it. That right, time he this, did. That's done. It could be dead. Boo. Okay, so I do believe... Okay, so we have winner's finals, Brent and Spicy Steve. And loser semis would be Flash Kick and Lord BBH. So that should be our top four. That's a barn burner if I've ever heard one. 
especially with Lord BBH and his Julia. Oh, man, it's been a long time since I've seen Julia, and it's giving me PTSD watching. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh, God, here comes the mix-up. Is she going to go low? Or am I going to get thrown? Am I going to get DP'd? Or am I going to eat an overhead? She she gets a laugh off of that, that step. So you that definitely, if you get into that situation, it's... uh hard to choose what to do against her but congratulations to everybody who made it top four i'm sure that set is killing it if you're uh interested ifc yipes has the top four um so you guys should definitely go on there as soon as you watch this head over there watch that top four see how it plays out i might even go do it myself because i'm curious to see who came out on top Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the pools matches for Combreaker 2023 Street Fighter Cross Tekken, celebrating 10 years of version 2013. I don't have a flyer offhand to show you, but our next stop will be at Evolution Championship Series Las Vegas, the first weekend of August. We're going to have a six-on-six -six exhibition featuring 12 of the greatest Street Fighter Cross Tekken players of the last 10 years who have been keeping the torch lit as everyone else went elsewhere. And commentating it will be myself and Jury Kill's friend, the two voices you heard today. There is going to be a thousand bucks spread out between the players on the winning team. A cool four figures. One grand. Perfect for Vegas, right? Yeah. You see, I look, I look at it this way. We talk about what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. I don't see it that way. What happens in Vegas is accepted in Vegas. And Street Fighter Cross Tech, that's the pariah game. That's the naughty game. Anytime this game gets momentum, you have someone like a Stumblebee or Matt McMuscles, someone to tell you why you shouldn't play this game or support anything that it brought the table. But that's why it's perfect that I'll be at Evo. That's why it's perfect it'll be in Las Vegas. Because we understand men and women like you who know better. You mm, want to yeah. be celebrated for playing this game in public, don't you? We got you covered. 10th anniversary of version 2013 and... We'll also be signing a poster done by the legendary Kando Ken, and we'll be auctioning that poster off for charity once we're done. I have spent over 600 bucks on this poster. I look forward to showing you what it looks like when it's ready. And we'll also yeah. keep you informed on when and where you can watch this exhibition live. I'm still in the process of negotiating with streamers and promoters. We have a documentary for this game and the event that I will share more details about as they become concrete. Oh, good. Yeah, very good. Looking forward to everything. It sounds... Can't come any sooner, but it'll be here before you know it. All righty. That was Jury Kill's friend, and I am Psycho Blue, conductor of the Hype Train, Mr. Hype Gems, hashtag CrossWires, hashtag Street Fighter Cross Tech, and I will see each and every one of you next time. Whenever that may be, whether it be in Vegas or a little bit sooner. Later, everyone.